Hello and welcome to Talk God. It's as much about you as it is about us here in the studio. If God is for you, no one can be against you. Today you can be free. You can have your sins forgiven. Welcome. This is Thursday the 16th of July and this is Simply the Truth live with me, Doug Harris. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being part of this show and I hope you're going to be taking part in what I think today is going to be a very interesting uh, discussion. <laughs> today is one of our special uh, biblical The Truth About And I talked about it being interesting because it's the truth about once saved, always saved. And we've got a question mark at the end. (laughs) That's the question that we're going to be looking at. The truth about once saved, always saved. And to help me, as you know, I don't do these things myself. Uh, To help me, I have my resident evangelist all the way from South Wales. Once again, they let you across the bridge, Julian Thomas. Julian, and yet thank again, you again. And have to pay to go back in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Julian uh, runs Complete Package Ministries down in, 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 in South Wales, and we've talked about that before. Heart of evangelism, and of course, therefore a heart to see people Amen. saved and, 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 and fully saved. So he's got some interesting insights uh, into today's question. And also Matt, Matt Bounds, who I'm told is a theologian, although... <laughs> that's what Julian said. Yeah, that's yeah. what Julian Compared said. Compared to me, I meant. <laughs> Compared to you, you're a theologian. Matt uh, is, uh, is pastor of uh, the Living Word Church in Carmarthen. Uh, thanks uh, for coming on and, and adding a little bit of sanity, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. We'll find out as uh, as we go through <laughs> in the, the the discussion. What is a very important question? And all joking apart, some people get so hung up on it mm-hmm. that they really don't know what to do. Others are just don't know that they're going along petrified that they've committed the unforgivable sin or they've sinned once too much. And so I I, I do believe, knowing you guys, that. We will be looking very positive at this today. Very interesting, you said there that you knew your mm. sins were forgiven. Do I take from that that you've never had a problem on, on the subject personally that we're talking today? In other words, you always knew your sins were forgiven. Or was there ever a part, mm. either in your early life or later on in your Christian life, that, that yeah. this became a problem to you? Well, in my case, that's a very good question because although on that day I gave my life to Christ, I was convinced my sins were forgiven. And I can tell you that this afternoon as well. Amen. No, there were months, there were years in between times where I had really had a lot of doubts and yeah. did worry about whether I was truly saved and did wonder about this whole teaching of once saved, always saved. So I can't tell you this afternoon, I've always been sure that once saved, always saved. It's something I've become convinced right. of over time. And and that's probably very helpful because what you are going to obviously be sharing today are some of those things that (laughs) that were real to you and and wherever you've come to. And as I have purposely not asked you guys the conclusions you've come to, so it's going to be as much as a surprise to me as it is (laughs) to everybody else. I just hope it's not a surprise to you. (laughs) Uh, Julian, was it for you? I I, I know we've shared before you've been through some difficult times and God has brought you through those praise God but Mm -hmm. in in your life of growing up I mean was there a time when this really was a problem to you yeah it's one of those subjects where you you um, you kind of dip in and out of it Um, when I first became a Christian I was 19 um, it was around about the same time as Matt two years before Matt actually Um, so I'm, I'm I'm old He's a few years older. Yeah, you can work it out from there. You're not as old and, and as me, so don't worry, guys. <laughs> but, but at that point in my life, I, I had no problem on the subject matter at all. Mm. None at all. You know, God was uh, saved me. He was going to keep me. But then again, a lot of my, my Christian life in those days was almost New Testament stuff anyway. The first two or three years of my Christian life was, was out and out, pure evangelism. Um, on, almost to, to the level of New Testament stuff. You know, I was, I was going around and people were s- following me around, asking me that question, what do we need to, to do to be saved? You know, and that, that's what was going on. So at that point in my life, absolutely no problem with it at all. I was a young man, invincible, you know. 
Um, I've been through a few periods in my life where I have sat down and wondered whether God had forsaken me. Not because I, I doubted God's grace or mercy, but because I doubted whether his grace or mercy would, would stoop that low. Right. Because yeah. some of the things Because I've, of what you had Because done of what I've done or where I've yes. been, where, yeah. where, where the, the, the depths that I've gone to. Um, I, I've, I've been so sinful um, and not been able to keep up that initial love of, of, of the Lord, you know. Um, so, yes, there, there have been issues where I've gone, well, I couldn't possibly believe in one saved, always saved, feeling the way I've gone through things, the way, I, the way I've let God down, not the other way around, you know. And I'm, pr I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people, um, possibly even a majority of Christians who would be in the same boat as me, having, having thought, well, you know, you read the Bible, and of course the Bible t t tells you about all these wonderful things, and 90% of the Bible tells you about the wonderful things that Paul and Peter did, and, and, and that's the standard we try to set ourselves. And, and it's unrealistic. Mm -hmm. And lots of people set themselves that standard, and it is unrealistic, and they fail. And then they start going down this path of thinking, well, perhaps God can't keep me. Perhaps I'm too wicked. Perhaps I'm too much of, of, a, of a burden to him for, for him to keep me, you know. Um, I, I'm in a good place at the moment. Um, and, and I'm with Matt. I'm absolutely convinced. Not perhaps of the argument of once saved, always saved. But certainly I believe that God is powerful enough to keep whatever he has in his hands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whether yeah. I believe he does or not is a separate issue maybe. Yeah. But I know that God can do that. Yeah. Regardless of how, how, how low you've got. Maybe coming back to that, Julian, just mm -hmm. what we were saying. Many people have this feeling, and I'm not sure they always know what it is, but that I've committed the unforgivable sin. Mm. They're not quite sure what the unforgivable mm. sin is, but they've committed it. And because of that, they automatically say in their minds, in their hearts, obviously, I, I am now no longer a Christian because this sin cannot be forgiven. And there are other verses that we'll look at as we go through, which, mm. uh, which they often will bring in there. Can we just talk a little bit about this unforgivable sin? Um, what, what it is, uh, did you ever feel that you really uh, committed it? Had you ever, in your understanding, worked out, hey, I know what it is and I've done it mm. or I haven't done mm. it? Uh, share a little bit about that yeah. and, and then Matt afterwards. I, I don't think uh, I, I ever got to the point where I, I thought to myself, I know what it is and I've done that. Right. I think as, as a young Christian, eager to learn more about the Word of God and to get into the Word of God, you do sort of wonder what it is and, and could you possibly have gone there? Uh, and the first thing that people used, used to say to me was, when I, when I would question about it, uh, ministers and the like would say, well, listen, if you're worrying about it, the likelihood is that you haven't done it. And, yes. and it but, but what bothers me, they never qualified that. And you go, oh, that bothers me even more now, because you didn't qualify it. Well, you know, I, I just want to qualify it in, in my way. I would say that the way I would qualify that is, if you're in a place where you're so hardened to God and so hardened to the gospel... You're so hardened to the teaching of Christ. You're not going to worry for one second that you've done anything wrong, let alone the, the unforgivable sin. You are so hard, you're not going to worry about it. So if you do worry about it, you're probably not in that place. The likelihood is that you're not in that yeah. place. Now, I think the only way we can, we can truly discuss it is to go to the Scripture Please itself. Do. It's, yeah. um, it's Matthew chapter 12 and uh, verse 30. Matthew 12, um, verse, verse 30. Verse 30. It's, it simply says this. He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters. This is elsewhere. I think it's in, in, in all three synoptics. It's, it's in Mark as well, certainly. And yes. so I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or the age to come. Now, I've read up a little bit on this and, and found that some people actually believe that it could only possibly happen during the time of Jesus' yeah. ministry. Mm -hmm. I, I don't particularly agree with that um, because the Holy Spirit is still here. He's still with us. He's still moving. He's still working. Um, he's still performing miracles around the world. He may not be doing much with, with the lack of faith in our country, but around the world, a lot of these things that Jesus was doing is still going on. And let's not forget that Jesus did say, you will do greater things. Yes. So the Holy Spirit must be 
continuing in his work, right. if we're to do greater things.